Hey Sagittarius, it's Empress Rose here. Welcome to your reading. These are general readings. We take what works, we leave what doesn't, as with everything in life. And if I don't catch your wavelength or storyline on this reading, go check your other major placements. Uh, also hit that subscribe button. It makes me happy and helps other people find the channel. And so we're starting with Moonology deck for an intuitive vibe of where we might be going today. And then we're going to go on to a more traditional tarot spread with the writer Waite Smith deck uh, celebrating um, Pamela Coleman Smith's artwork um, for the rest of this month. So uh, let's see, we have Moonology here. Whoa! All right, Sagittarius. This is, you didn't get a Sagittarius card, but I feel like we got the arrow anyway. Um, hold your vision, fixed moon. So rough, rough road ahead, rough, difficult, some difficulty ahead, some challenges, let's say, challenges. Hold your vision. Uh, you got some work to do. You got your work cut out for you. I see mountains. You're going to be climbing them. Your thighs are going to be burning. You're going to get some blisters on your feet kind of situation. So, but remember where you're going. Remember why you chose this journey. Remember, uh, where, where, where you're headed and what you want. So keeping that vision in mind of, of what that this, you did choose this, you chose this route and you chose this work. So keeping that in mind as you move forward move ahead and uh, into some challenging terrain. Let's call it that. And then we have be bold, make the first move, cardinal moon. This isn't necessarily be brash. We'll see what the other cards say. Um, but this isn't necessarily brash. This isn't necessarily uh, make a, a sudden first move. This is, you know, being bold, make the first move. Sometimes that's planning something out, committing to something. Maybe committing to this journey. It's a difficult journey. You know it. You know it's hard. You know what lies ahead is going to be work is going to have some difficulties and some challenges. You know it. This is almost like the fool card, it feels like. Like you can see the challenges, you can see the difficulties, uh, and you're going to strike out on this path anyway. You're going to pack your backpack. You're going to do your research first. You're going to, you know, make sure you understand what the likely weather situations are going to be, what you're going to be facing, what's likely to happen, the type of terrain, um, you know, what, how much water you're going to need for this trip. You're going to plan things out, right? The be bold, make the first move, but you're committing to this journey, even though you know it's going to be difficult um, and uh, you're committed to it. And you're making some moves. This might have been a dream of yours to hike this particular mountain or, or this. This might have been a plan, a dream, a vision that you've had for a long time. And this is saying, get going. Yeah, you're right. It is going to be hard, but it's time to start moving on it. It's time to start start going. Scott always reminds me of uh, hiking Hans Peak in Colorado um, on a full moon with a group of friends. It was, it was great. I initiated that. I started that whole thing. It was really fun. So I'm, I was bold. I made a first move. Uh, full moon, a bunch of us hiked up there. The, it, it was a little intense for sure, but difficult. People from altitude sickness had to had to get sidelined and only a few of us made it to the top, but pretty awesome um, journey and pretty very glad I did it. Obviously very memorable, low these 20 some years ago. 22 years ago, I think. Something like that. Yeah, so hold that vision. Go for it. All right. Uh, let's see here. The Sagittarius, what did you want to do there? Past, present, inner landscape. What's the issue? Environment, to do list, possible outcome. Oh boy. Oh my. What on earth could this mean? All right, so we're, um, I don't usually do the Rider Waite Smith deck because, um, I don't know, I started with it, but um, also it's got these like really, it can feel to me constraining, like there are these really strict interpretations that everybody knows and you have to, there's a little less room for intuitive, uh, but there, but that could just be, it's my own hang up about it. Anyway, we're celebrating um, the artist, which I don't know what else there is to these cards, but I don't know what writer and Wait did, but Smith did the artwork. So we're celebrating that um, as part of Black History Month. So 
Um, and this is, I've been told, you know, this is the original deck. This is not the original deck. She did this deck in 1904 and tarot has been along much longer than that. And cardamalty, uh, just in general, working with cards has been along, I've been around for an extremely long time. So it's not the original, but it is iconic. All right. In your recent past, we have the five of cups. I love that. I, her depictions are very iconic. I mean, Sometimes when I'm working with the other cards, I see these cards overlaid um, on top of them. So five of cups, we've got um, the flow of life. We've got a grief process. We've got focused on grieving, focus on a loss, uh, lost time, lost money, an emotional attachment to something, and it's been lost. And there's been some focus on that. This can be a natural, normal grieving process. We got to focus on it. We got to deal with our losses. We can't just pretend like they didn't happen and move on. Uh, so there's a sense where these losses are part of the flow of life. Um, and there's always, there's this bridge back here, which to me just brings up this phrase, you know, um, water under the bridge, it's water under the bridge. Uh, it's okay to grieve. It's okay. So you've been through some sort of grief process. There's a, there's, there's more though. It's not all is lost. We've got more and, uh, we can turn around and appreciate what we do have when we're ready for that. Uh, of course you can always get stuck in that grief process a little bit, or who's to say what that is, but if it doesn't feel healthy, and doesn't feel like it's pros a process, but is a static situation. But with this river here, I feel like it is a process. It is a flow. This is all part of the flow of life and grief is part of that flow. So, you know, water was meant to flow. And, and so the spillage is just one of the ways that water flows. Um, so there might be some, uh, some grief there in the past. Um, and then we have Ace of Cups here. Whoa. We, so we have Five of Cups, some grief. Uh, you turn, you've got this, and then it looks like it's, you're turning around now to find this brand new emotional beginning, this, this eternal well, that eternal, uh, sunshine, as Camus said, the eternal sunshine in, in, the, no, the invincible, invincible summer. Yeah, the eternal sunshine. Camus was invincible summer in the midst of winter. He discovered there was within him an invincible summer. So there's been a grief process, but now there's a resurrection here. Now you have turned around and there's something gorgeous being handed to you. Something really beautiful. We have this hand reaching out. I almost want to hold it, you know, we're going to hold hands here. Um, and there's this emotional, overwhelming, beautiful, peaceful, new beginning. Those new beginnings really do need to be celebrated because, you know, like new babies and new life, it's a big deal. So there's something here that's, that's grown from all this muck and this mud and this, this dirt and this grief that you've been through. There's a new beginning rising up out of that blossoming from some past, uh, some past decay or past losses. And it's, it's brought about this, this it's handed to you by the universe bringing in this beautiful new emotion and feeling this peace here uh what you're hoping to do your hopes your fears this could be fears this could be hopes uh communication fast moving communication eight of wands so lots of Lots of communicate. You're, you're hoping to communicate. You're hoping to have some, some, well, this might be fast moving communication that you're hoping for. You're hoping things move quickly. So things move fast. You've got a new beginning here. You've been sad long enough. You don't want to do that anymore. This new beginning. And you're like, let's go, let's go, let's go. I want to move with this thing. This feels really good. This is like some new rush of energy, some fresh rushing energy. But you know, that little baby's got to roll before he can crawl, crawl before he can walk, walk before he can run. So, but it looks like you want to go from, uh, having been born to running, um, running down the street. You want to, you just want to run with this. It feels there might be some excitement, some freshness coming in, especially after this, um, this loss and grief energy. There's this fresh new beginning. This could be like a new relationship after an old one. You kind of want to rush into it. Uh, maybe some, uh, maybe you're used to, or you want to do some love bombing, um, which is not the healthiest way to start a relationship uh, and can be very manipulative. Um, so you could be worried about that or, or wondering about that or something like that. But it's just this rush to like kind of solidify this new thing um, rather than letting it 
you know, go through all the stages. There's a sense of wanting to rush forward and move fast. Um, or you could be worried. You could be like, hey, I've just had some losses here. I know this is a beautiful new thing, but I would like, I don't want it to move this fast. I'm not excited. I, I don't want it to go this fast. So you could be putting some brakes on something, not wanting it to move quite as fast as, as it's going, or you could be really eager to get going here. Um, uh, but this is about communication and movement. Uh, there's something unfair going on here. We have a reverse justice. We're out of we're out of justice. We're out of balance. There's something maybe dishonest. I see another dishonesty card here. Uh, there's something maybe a little bit dishonest going on. Um, a little bit sneaky. Uh, justice always brings up integrity, ideas of integrity, and how we get where we're going. So you could be dealing with um, not being in integrity like maybe wanting to rush forward but it doesn't have uh there's a sense of dishonesty about it um you know it's always good to slow down and be like am i being authentic here am i being honest here am i being true here you know um but the the justice card uh in reverse well the justice card talks about how we go how we get where we're going is equally as important as where we're going right the decisions we make the morals we use the ethics that we that are involved in these decisions how honest we are how fair we are uh, that all matters actually quite a bit more than where we're going. We want to go someplace fast, but there's a sense here that there's something not quite right about the situation. There's not something not quite true about the situation, not quite honest about it, especially if there's been some love bombing. This would be, you know, more of a manipulation tactic going on rather than a, a true like, oh, this is so exciting. So there's something, uh, some a little bit, something a little bit hinky going on here that's not quite on the up and up. Um, this is why we don't want to be rushing forward is because we got to take things step by step. So there's something unethical uh, or there could just be some unfairness. Something feels very unfair uh, going on. But with this Ace of Cups, it seems like this is like something that you're hoping is a positive new beginning. Uh, but and then with this be bold, make the first move, you know, you might be waiting for communication, but this is, could be telling you maybe you've got to do the communicating um, here. Uh, maybe you need to communicate something honestly. Maybe you need to uh, set something right, set something straight here, something that's that's been misunderstood or obfuscated or isn't fair, and you'd like to communicate that need for fairness or pointing out this injustice. But there's something that seems a little unfair and a little hinky about this and possibly some ethical issues going on. Um, in your environment, you have the high priestess. So the high priestess um, in any other position would be like, hey, Tarot's saying, I don't want to tell you. There are some things I need to keep secret from you. This in the environment situation uh, to me talks about something very spiritual is going on in your environment. There's some sort of spiritual connection. There are things hidden. Yeah, there are things hidden intentionally. I, I mean, this is now the second card that we've gotten here. We've got this injustice card or reverse justice card, possibly dealing with some untruths. And we've got this high priestess or stuff you don't know in your environment. It's being kept from you. I'm not, I don't necessarily think that it's that the other person might think it's it's for your own good. There's there's some something um, something hidden in your environment. Maybe you're do, the one doing the hiding, Sagittarius. But there's something hidden in your environment. Uh, someone's made a decision. I feel like it's not. I feel like they've made a decision for you. Um, what you should know and what you shouldn't know rather than laying the cards all out on the table and letting you make a free will decision based on what you see. Uh, this is about uh, some something in your environment has made the decision for you or has decided to withhold information from you. Uh, they think it they they think it's for your best good possibly but um, since you don't know what it is, how the hell would you know if it's for your best good? So you're getting some sort of intuitive hit that there's something going on here, but uh, you haven't really um, tapped into, you, you don't know for sure. So this is a disconcerting card. This would be why maybe you want all this communication, some honest communication, clear up what on earth is going on here. Um, because you're, you might be sensing that the information is being withheld from you and it feels it feels unfair. So um yeah this really is some rough terrain we're, we're following here we've got some rough terrain so far we've got reverse justice a high priestess in the environment card any other any other place would have a slightly different interpretation but the environment means that something's something's being withheld from you but it possibly really is for your better good i don't know you want to communicate it about it but it could be better that you don't know 
you just but you, you're probably getting a sense that something's up here something's not right with the situation so um your to-do list your opportunity for growth here is this five of swords everybody's favorite deck card in the deck right uh i'd say seven of swords is worse but five of swords uh this is a winner take all situation you've got to look out for yourself it's not it's it's it's, it's not a win-win situation you didn't scorpio got the win-win card you're getting the uh there's going to be winners and there's going to be losers here and you've got to decide what you want because this is so fascinating because this ace of cups makes us sound like woo we've got some beautiful new beginning but then there's all this like I want to communicate. I need to, I need to get clarification. Something seems, something seems dishonest here. Something's being withheld from me. And then this vibe of swords is you're going to have to look out for yourself, look out for your own interests. And it's, it might be difficult. It might be hard. It might hurt other people. But this card to me is all about, um, those difficult, really difficult choices. And so for different people, it's going to feel very differently. If you're happy making, what the rest of us call difficult choices and this isn't this might mean a little something a little different for you so if you're used to looking out for yourself this may be like let someone else win don't win for winning's sake this is definitely a card warning about that don't we we're not winning for winning's sake right just just to get points um here like that's not what we're doing here uh that would be an injustice thing but what we're doing here is um you know like this is like well maybe these guys lost all their swords in a bet and like you're not doing anybody any favors by you know standing in front of their karmic bus and and well no okay you lost these but here have them this is like or hmm, that was maybe a bad example i just feel like the this card to me talks about there's not a it's not a win-win situation. There's not an easy choice here. There's not an easy option. This always looks like this guy is like stealing their swords, but maybe they lost them. Maybe they gave them away. Maybe the situation was, okay, we're doing a bet. We're playing a game. Um, and I, and he gets all the swords like, but this can also be about, um, like swords are communication and ideas. And this can be about, uh, not communicating or withholding communication um and uh so overall you've got to make some choices and they might be some some hard choices and there's there's going to be winners and losers here and this isn't this isn't everybody goes home with a with a participation prize situation so that's your to-do list make the hard choices make the difficult choices and the difficult choice may be to walk away from a situation and maybe like this is there's something there's something too hinky here i don't you know maybe this guy's like i don't i don't like working with you i'm done you want you want to keep all the swords you want to have everything your way and do it all your way well then i'm out of here i'm checking out or maybe you're this guy and it's like i don't i don't want you to be this guy just grieving crying and grieving over this i mean the, but yeah maybe it's just sad and frustrating this guy, sometimes you got to be this guy. I don't know. You know, life throws at us a bunch of complex situations or you can just walk away. But this isn't like we're splitting the pie evenly. Somebody gets the pie. Somebody walks away. Somebody's crying. So, um, so that's what this, this card's about. And you got to, you can you get an, the choice you got, you get is, uh, not how this game is being played, but what, what do you want to do? You want to walk away, walk away. You want to take it all, take it all. You want to sit down and cry about it? Well, you still don't get a prize, but here you are. So he's sort of like, hey, these are my toys. I'm taking them. And you're like, okay, fine. Fuck you. Keep it. Keep your information to yourself. Keep your, uh, keep, fine. I know there's something, something weird going on here and I don't want any part of it. So your choices are, those are your choices. That's your to-do list. But this is such a weird reading. We've got a lot of cups. We've got a lot of emotional stuff going on here, um, possibly relationship oriented. Where you're going is nine of cups. Like he wins, he won. So maybe this is saying like, do, but, but you're proud. You're proud of, mm, you're taking whatever you choose here, because it's gonna be different for all the different variables we're all dealing with, right? But there is a difficult choice. Um, you're going to be proud. You're going to be, pr you want to be proud of where you ended up, 
of how you got here. You want to be able to tell people about the decisions you made, the choices you made in your life, and that you're proud of what you've done. And, and we don't do that by forcing it. We do that by, you know, we don't do it by deciding we're going to be proud of all of our choices. We do it by deciding we're going to make choices that we can be proud of later on. Um, and sometimes those are surprising in the moment because we change, right? And sometimes a choice may feel mean, but then later you're like, actually, I, I stood up for myself and I'm very proud of that. And sometimes choices may feel like you st you're just standing up for yourself. And in fact, you're actually being the aggressor and making a situation worse. But what, what, this is where a possible outcome, you could end up very proud of what you've done, what you've accomplished about making it to the top of this peak. You make it to the top of this peak, you hit your goal, you do what you wanted to do, you get, you're going to remember it for 20 years. You're going to be really proud of it. You're going to be like, hey, I did that. I did that. I hiked Hans Peak in the full moon and, and made it to the top. It was beautiful. It was amazing. So it's some sort of emotional journey here where I, you're going to feel proud of, of this decision and how you handled it because we've got really messed up energy here. And so, but where you're going is being proud of, of where, but I think this be bold, make the first move. You've got to make a choice. You've got to make a decision and it's a decision you're going to be proud of. So it's going to, you're not going to be in this energy. You're not going to be like, and then when the, ju when the um, judgment card comes back, when it's time to review the decision, this is where you're going to be sitting proud, happy, happy with your emotional health and well-being and the choices that you made. So choosing emotional health and well-being your own out of the situation. That means walking away, walk away. If that means um, winner take all situation, then I guess take it all. Because if that's, if that's the place where where you're going. That's our goal. That's what we want to see is this uh, nine of cups. All right, Sagittarius, I hope that that was helpful for you. And thank you so much for, um, for watching. And I hope you have a great week or two, two weeks is what we're doing now. Fortnightly readings.